what God wants us to sing. We don't give to who God tells us to give to. We don't pray when God tells us to pray. We don't study when God tells us to study. We don't hold our tongue when God tells us to hold our tongue. The difference between you turning down a job, no matter what it is, is the fact that you're just still on the floor. And you're searching for a new one. Turning down a job that God has given you to do for Him is a whole different story. Because there is no other applications out there. Of course, the enemy is calling you. He got, you know, he got things to do. But see, there's only two bosses, only two people to work for. You got God and the devil. Now, my thing is, the devil ain't fooling with him. Because his job gets you locked up, gets you in trouble, gets you killed. That's what he's, that's what he's hired for. But the job that God gave me, let me share something with you just real quick. Growing up, I've never really liked public speaking. I don't. I, well, I didn't like public speaking. I didn't want to read my book report in front of the class. I didn't want to give no, no oral presentations. I didn't want to, you know how in English class you always read this thick 300 page book for the whole semester and then you got a test on it at the end? And you know, they ask every student to read out loud, stuff like that. I didn't like that. And then God called me to preach. Now when I think about preach, I'm thinking about a man or a woman standing in front of a multitude of people speaking. No matter what it is, but they're in front of a bunch of people talking. I wasn't trying to, I didn't like that. I, I didn't, I didn't, I'm like, Lord, you know I don't do public speaking. Why would you call me to do that? But it was something that he said to me that stuck with me to this day. And he said, you will preach my word, and woe unto you if you don't. That literally scared the mess out of me. I don't know what a woe is, and I didn't want to find out. <laughs> That's what God is saying to his people today. If God calls you to preach, you better preach. If he calls you to prophesy, say what God tells you to say when he tells you to say it. There are people waiting for a word to come out of your mouth before they get saved, before they get delivered, before they get healed. Then they are heard pastor after pastor after bishop after minister after everyone that they heard preach the same word. Because it didn't come out of your mouth, they have not yet been delivered. My God. Thank you, Jesus. The time is now, people. If you have not yet given your life to Christ, if you have not yet answered the call, as Paul would say, I beseech you now to do it. Beseech means please, beg. The time is now. God has called us to a time, this time, to preach his word. There are young people out there dying and God is calling young people to get the young people delivered. We've all grown up listening to old 50, 60 year old preachers. 
Be real. Yeah, yeah. You've all grown up listening to the old, the old man, the old woman speaking. Of course, they're experienced. They've been through some things. You know? They have wisdom. They have, you know, you know, good advice. But the young people's minds right now are looking at them like, you don't know what I'm going through now. The 70s and the 60s is a whole lot different than the 90s and the millennium. The, the, the millennium. <laughs> the, the 2000s and all that. Couldn't get my L's right. <laughs> and that is true. It is different. It is different. But in actuality, it's the same. They had riots back in the day. They still have riots now. They're having gang fights back in the day. They're still having gang fights now. But this time it's with guns instead of knives and bats Amen. and bricks and sticks and stuff. <laughs> There's someone that you know that is going through or has been through the same thing that you've been through and because you haven't said anything to them, they're still bound. And what we don't realize is that they're waiting for you to say something. Mr. Grant talks a lot about we were, you know, going out and witnessing and everything. And that's great. I thank God that he has a heart for that. And that everybody that goes with him has a heart to do that. Because it's needed. It's definitely needed. But there are also people that are being witnessed to that go to church. They go to church. And they're waiting for a word from somebody to break off what is on them. And we're not saying anything. Amen. We're waiting to come up. It's time out for God. I'm not ready. It's time out for I'm not sure. It's time out for all of that. God is calling us now. That's right. He called us days, weeks, years ago. And we're still waiting for something to, some, some, some type of manifestation to happen before we realize, like, oh, okay, well, I'll go ahead and do it then. But make sure you think that whatever happens, you're going to live through it. Mm. How do you know whatever happens, you know, you're going to have that, uh, that, that, that next chance? People always say, tomorrow's not promised to you. Tomorrow's not promised to you. Mm. And it's true. Tomorrow is not promised to you. But the ones that speak the most are the ones that hold them back. Contradicting themselves. Time is now. The time is now. The time is now. Now meaning today. Now meaning before you leave here. Walk into your purpose that God has placed on your life. If you don't know what your purpose is, ask God. Ask God. He will tell you. A lot of us don't go to God with anything because he figured he ain't really trying to hear us right now because we ain't doing right. You know, you grew up. You grew up with all those sayings about, you know, you know, uh, you know, if it's thundering and stuff outside, God's mad, and <laughs> all that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> and for some reason, growing up, I kind of believed it because uh, my grandmother, right, when it thundered and stuff outside, she turned off all the lights in the house. She sat in the living room and prayed the whole time. <laughs> And me being a grandchild, I'm like, well, I do want to watch TV, but, you know, grandma, she, she's doing. So, like any other kid would do, I was 